My name's Evie Gurney. I'm the costume designer on The 47th, which is Mike Bartlett's new play at the Old Vic. So the first thing I do as a costume designer is read the script so that I can understand the characters, um, where they start at the beginning of the play, what happens to them during course of events, and where they end up and how this might affect the way that they look. The second thing that's really important as a costume designer is to see the set design because everything that I put on stage happens in the world that's already been created by the set designer. And the third part of the process is meeting the actors because for me I can't design costumes unless I know I'm who I'm designing them for. One of the main characters in the play is Donald Trump and as I was researching the kind of key elements in his look, one of the things that I noticed is that he has created a costume for himself. He's fixed on something which says rich successful guy and it's a suit with a very sharp square shoulder. It's the hair, the hair says a lot, it's very groomed, it's very extravagant. Um, the tan, obviously, real or fake, who knows? And the colours of the Republican Party, which are the blue suit, the red tie. So when we think about Trump, we think about somebody who's kind of very square with this broad shoulder and quite a puffed out chest, which isn't his natural body shape. That's all constructed by tailoring. And actually, that silhouette as a silhouette of power refers back to imagery, which is 500 years old. If you look at pictures of Henry VIII, for example, in the portrait gallery, you'll see that same broadened shoulder and puffed out chest as a sign of kind of success and power. And this feels like a very modern day iteration of that. Ivanka Trump, I guess, has learned a lot from her father in terms of creating a media friendly appearance. It's really interesting for me to remember that she was a contemporary of people like Paris Hilton on the socialite scene in the 90s and she has groomed herself into a woman who comes across as very serious, very statesman-like. A lot of this happened in the last five years. The skirts that she was wearing got longer, um, the necklines got higher, the sleeves got longer. She wears a lot of pastel colours, a lot of pink. It's very much Barbie goes to the office. Kamala Harris has a look which is very popular amongst women in power, which is the block coloured trouser suit. And that's also worn by Hillary Clinton, Angela Merkel. I think probably the most well-known colour blocker is Queen Elizabeth II, our current Queen of England. And she has said that she wears one colour head to toe to allow people to spot her in a crowd. And I think that Kamala also uses the same trick, wearing a cream all in one suit or wearing a burgundy all in one suit, a really, a real statement colour, but sticking to a silhouette that she knows is flattering, it's business-like, it's not fussy, it's not distracting. Where I do find a bit more personality coming through is in her jewellery choices, where you start to see something that feels a little bit more personal. Her mother's a Tamil Indian and pearls in Indian culture have a really rich significance. They're often given to women as they get married. I think one of the secrets of successful dressing is about creating a uniform for oneself. So understanding what suits in terms of colour and silhouette and repeating that. And that's not very exciting and not necessarily very fashionable, but it really works. And I think one of the things we see in a certain type of political wife, so an, a, an accompanying character as opposed to a main character. So somebody like Heidi Cruz, for example, is a style of very neat femininity that was first popularised by Jackie Kennedy when she was first lady, which is this kind of short jacket, decorative buttons, possibly tweed, probably Chanel, a neat knee length skirt, hat, sensible shoe, but done in a very beautiful colour palette, which allows you to do endless variations on that theme. 
My absolute icon in terms of power dressing is Elizabeth I. There are gorgeous portraits of her with the pearls and the ruffs and the wigs and the velvets and the jewels. And I think if I had a chance to dress any political figure, past, present, future, it would be her, without a doubt.